The Foxin Dream Team of Robert Bucknell and Nigel Fulton is back, and they've got a new toy, the Yukon Photon Night Vision Unit. Yes, we've been quite impressed by them, and when we were at the shooting show the other day, Scott Country were doing a deal for the show, and we just thought this is too good to miss, because A, they'd got them there, and they're rather a job to source at the moment, and B, they were doing a show price. So uh, we've ended up with one each, and I haven't christened mine yet, but I've played around with it a fair bit, and compared to the old kit I've used in the past, considering the money, I'm very impressed. Three or four rounds to sight it in. I bore sighted it. It was inch, inch and a half away from the bull. Moved it, and that's it. The next two shots, mm. two foxes. So we ran out on the old airfield and saw a set of eyes um, hiding under a bush or a spinny. We tried to call it, but... Um, well, the camera probably has a better better view, but I was watching through this new little night vision and I saw the eyes move. They moved to the left very fast and covered the... Hundred yards of the trees that was left till it got to the end, and it sat there. It may have come out um, of the tree line very slightly, but thereafter it disappeared. And that's all we saw of it, really. Mm. Certainly reacted to the call, mm. but it wasn't coming out beyond the trees, and it hadn't had a lamp on it other than the initial spot of it. Trouble is, you think, well, it's definitely a fox because it reacted, but mm. it could easily be a deer with a youngster and muntjac coming out to try and slay you for interfering with its youngster. Swung down the other way, didn't we? Went round the back, saw absolutely nothing that half. We must have covered two, three hundred acres. And then swung round back through the village and you spotted something right next door to a little bungalow. Yes, a mm. fox. Quite close we to the road. We pulled back the other side. We'd hardly, in fact, got the lights off, so I couldn't see anything. Pulled to a halt. And before it hardly stopped, there was a bag. I was thinking, I hope it wasn't the pet cat. Mm. And there was clearly a fox in that night vision. You went and picked up? Yeah, I squelched my way towards it. <laughs> picked it up and brought this a good little vixen, vixen back. Mm. It was in a spot where they've got ducks, chickens, all sorts of livestock there. Uh, pretty good idea, it's um, lining something up or peering through the hedge. Yeah. And it was an old vixen, I think. But, uh, and it wasn't too uncomfortable with us, although we didn't bathe it in light. It, um, you know, it never saw a lamp other than when we were going along the road. Mm. It could have been car lights, but... Uh, and that was one fairly swiftly in the bag. And then, who swung? Where did we go? Only about 400 yards down the road, wasn't it? Went around the corner. And there was a, a fox. Well, fox. You identified two deer across the other side, feeding on the... Yeah, I could see them clearly out in that ditch line. But um, just on the edge of the buildings, there was a little glint by a bush. Just one, and it was... You know, the right sort of height, quick look, could well have been a fox. So we finished looking in that field on the other side of the road and then turned around and went back and drove through the buildings. It's beginning to look like the photon won't be called into action again tonight, but the boys are about to get a surprise. You could see, well, I couldn't see anything. All I saw was your reaction and the light flick up and go out, and immediately I knew that you'd seen something, pulled to a halt. Straight on it with the night vision, it looked like it was about to cross a ditch on a way. Um, stood there long enough to get a completely clear outline, check what it was, and shot. One more that came out the hedge and the wind was wrong. 
called that in. And Into the wood. That wind was, I think the, the spinny we were next, although the wind should have been going, that spinny would have drawn the air down there because it started coming in really well and then it just stood and looked yeah. at us. Yeah. And it went away from the wind. I think when it stood and looked, we were all agreed because we, we talked about how far it was away. We think it's 200 or a little bit over 200 yards away. And I could just pick out in that scope the front of it, a nice white bib. And if I'd had a couple of seconds more, although it's 200 yards away, I could probably have taken a, a shot on that. But we knew it. it was definitely a fox. It was looking on. You can see it's a fox, but getting the outline and the where you actually want to place the bullet, where the real target is within that fox, took a little bit more adjustment. Mm. We're only five power, so it's not bad. No. And then we pulled up a bit further down the road, all of, what, half a mile down the road, turned around, and there was another fox, again, moved downwind, and mm. that was the end of that. Whether it was the same one or not, I don't know. It okay, moved no a bit. Where I was seated, I couldn't really see anything down the back there. It was tucked in over the top of a hedge. Mm. Certainly with the first one, I was just using the IR for the camera, but because if I used the Nightmaster IR with James's camera, there was, it was just too bright, even if I set the brightness on that to really low. The second time, I think I had, well, use of both, because James's camera's on behind me. But that's very, Decent. very good for you know, 400 pounds for a night vision and everything's on it. With the, obviously, with the exception of the Nightmaster, you add on, but it's got its own illuminator that comes with it anyway, which is not bad at all. Mm -hmm. So, good evening out. And uh, good first outing for your little piece of kit there. That's worked well.